a lot of times completing math problems is kind of like doing a puzzle. You're trying, you're given some things and you have to find some things, some unknowns. And it gets a little bit tricky in Algebra 2 sometimes, but let's just focus on, we're going to separate this section into two sections actually. So the second part we're not going to focus on today. We're going to focus on the first two. So when you have to write a quadratic equation, given certain certain pieces of the equation, there's different ways to do it depending on which pieces you're given. So let's say that you're given a point in the vertex of the quadratic equation. So you're going to be able to find that using vertex form. So it says a quick little review. Vertex form is this one right here. And that's the one where the vertex is h and k. So that's kind of a key point in there. Let's look at the example. So it says write the equation of the parabola shown in the graph. So we're given the vertex of 50, 35. And we're given just another random point on, on the parabola. And it could be any point on there. And in this case, it's this one right here. And let's look at vertex form. So if we have y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So right there, we already know what h and k are because that's right here, h and k. So if h is 50, go ahead and fill that in. We're just going to fill in the things that we know. And then k is 35. Now the problem is right now we have too many unknowns. We can't solve those variables because we have just too many unknowns. However, there is one more thing that we do know, and that is this point right here. And so this is the general thing that's going to help with both these types of equations that we're going to talk about, both types of situations, is that this random point should work in this equation, and it will help us find that other thing that we don't know, the value of a. And so you're going to actually substitute in, keep in mind that this is the x value and this is the y value. So you're going to put, plug those into the equation. And we have 15 equals a is our unknown, 0 is x minus 50 squared plus 35. And now, woohoo, we only have one unknown and we have an equation, which means we can usually solve that. So 0 minus 50 is negative 50. And go ahead and just do your simplifying steps. Order of operations, say I have to square something first before I do anything else. So fit negative 50 times negative 50 is 2,500 with this A attached to it. I usually like to write the variable after the number, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just keep in mind that's the same as A times 2,500. And then just copy down what's left. Now we're down to a two-step equation, so subtract 35 from both sides and we get 15 minus 35 different signs so we subtract and get negative 20 equals 2500 a you might say whoa that's not going to turn out into a integer or a whole number no it's not and then unfortunately some of these problems it's not going to be a, exactly a whole number but when you divide that you do get a which is just punch into your calculator and you get negative 0 0.008 and now you might say well what do I do with a now okay so now we're gonna forget about the X and the Y that we substituted in because we want to have this work for any input so we don't want to use the X and Y that we just used we want to go back to the beginning and we're actually going to use this equation right here, except we're going to replace the a. And this time you're going to leave the x and the y just as they are. So we're going to say y equals negative 0 0.008, because that's a that we were looking for, times x minus 50 squared. I think I need to move this over just a bit. I should have made this one a little larger from this space over here. Okay, actually just rewrite that really quick. Okay, we can see it one more time. So y equals, I 
remember a is negative 0 0.008 times x minus 50. I'm just copying down what we have here, squared plus 35. All right, that's our equation that would work for any input of x to get a specific y. And it's, if you were to do that, you'd get points over here that match on to this parabola. Okay, and you'll notice this does have an endpoint and a starting point and an endpoint. We're not really dealing with domain and range today, but this would have definitely have a restricted domain, which means only certain x values would work. Okay, so write the equation of the parabola shown in the graph. So this one, we're given different things this time. So this time we are going to use the second example that we have here, given a point and the x-intercepts, p and q. So notice this time we're given our x-intercepts and another random point. And so we're going to actually start with this equation right here. So y equals, go ahead and just copy it down so you have it nearby, y equals a times x minus p times x minus q. And similar to last time, even though we're using a different type of equation, a different form of our equation, we're going to plug in some things that we know. And so P and Q are these numbers right here, 4 and 24. Those are our x-intercepts. So we're going to just plug those in right away. So we've got Y equals A times, it doesn't matter which one you put where, so we've got x minus 4 and x minus 24. Okay, and now in this specific one, we're going to kind of borrow this point right here because that is a point of that equation, so it should work to help us find what a is, similar to last time. We're going to write y equals a is what we don't know. Oh, I'm sorry, we're not going to write y we're going to use y from right here. So this is x and this is y. So we've got 9.6 equals a times 0 minus 4 times 0 minus 24. That's kind of fortunate to have 0. Makes it a little bit easier here. So that essentially just becomes a times negative 4 times negative 24. 9.6 equals, all right, negative 4 times negative 24 equals positive 96. I usually write my a on the other side, so I'm going to write 96a equals 9.6. And when you divide that, you end up with 0 0.1 equals a. And now you're going to plug it back into this equation, kind of like last time. Except this time, we leave the x and the y as unknowns because we want to have a general equation that works for any input of x to get our y. So we end up with y equals 0 0.1 times x minus 4 times x minus 24. All right, so I know that this might still be a little bit confusing. I want you to do your best on the pod. The first few problems will be this type. I'll have separate directions to specify to use that certain vertex form. And then a couple problems will be this type, and I'll say specifically to use the intercept form on those ones. And as you do the problems, look right back at the notes, remember the steps, try to work through it, and just remember plug in the things that you know to find the things that you don't know. And at the very end, change it back so x and y are variables. All right, and message me if you have any questions, because I can work through any of these problems on Zoom with you if you'd like. Talk to you later.